Hey, this is John and welcome to my garage. It's a Sunday. I've got twin boys that are five years old and there's a ruckus inside. So this happens to be the quietest room in the entire house. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a sneak peek at what if I 0.5. So if you're watching this, this means that you've either signed up for our mailing list. Maybe you've done a customer discovery or a user interview. We have talked to a couple of investors and early sort of business folks that might be interested in what we're doing. So hopefully you're one of those three, and I'd love to show you what we've been up to, where we are, and where we're going. This is an MVP. What's an MVP? It stands for Minimal Viable Product. In startup tech land, it is the simplest, sometimes the ugliest version of something that you can put in front of potential customers and users to gauge what is and isn't working for them. Sometimes it's not pretty. It only has a limited subset of the functions and features that you plan long term, but it should be enough to get a sense of whether you're onto something or not, or whether you need to make some changes to your business plans. So let's dig in. To start with, I'm going to introduce you to different parts of the application. So I'm going to start by loading up a sample scenario that we've already built in advance. And that brings us up to here. This is our scenario canvas, our secret sauce. And this is where you can connect the dots together on all of your options and opportunities in life to model out and map out these big complex spider webs of choices. Each square blocks right here represents a decision. So in this particular example, someone has a decision to make. They can choose between job number one, job number two, and job number three. The second decision they're trying to make is whether they're gonna take the family to Drumheller or to Disneyland. Really quickly, you can see here, there's actually six different combinations of these choices. Developer and Drumheller, engineer and Drumheller, manager and Drumheller, developer and Disney, engineer and Disney, and manager and Disney. You can appreciate that very quickly, adding in a few more options and a few more choices and a few more decisions, this can get really complicated very, very quickly. And that's the most powerful part of what we're building, a way to visually keep track of all of these combinations over time. So that brings us down to the bottom left corner here. This is our scenario graph. There's a lot of work being done on this still, and this is going to refine over the coming weeks. But every single one of these scenario threads that we call them is also represented down here in the graph. So I can slide along to any point in time and see what those different scenario threads look like financially at those given points in time. What you're seeing right now is more of a cash flow. So month by month, you can tell if a decision has you above or underwater in your choices. We also have a capability of switching from a monthly view to a cumulative view. Part of what we're trying to do is help people understand when a short-term choice, long-term works out perfectly fine, but also when a short-term choice, long-term maybe actually works out really, really poorly, like buying a really expensive car or taking a trip that you can't afford. So here, you're also able to see how these choices map out over time we can look at smaller time ranges and better understand how every single choice nets out over time. In the bottom right corner here, I'm showing you scenario threads, and these are really, really important. Picture very quickly having 100 different scenario threads. It's impossible to build a spreadsheet or any other sort of way to keep track of all of those different combinations and understand where you should start looking first. Our goal is to take all of those combinations and then reorder them in a best fit scenario list. I say best fit instead of most profitable because it's a really important distinction. This slider here takes a look at every single node in our graph. If I slide this over to be finances, it's looking at the financial cost of every single one of these choices and building out a list from the most profitable down to the least profitable choice. I also have a slide here that allow me to slide it to this side. This icon represents ranks and reviews. When we build a node, we have the option to put in a star rating for that one. So a job could be a five-star job, a three-star job, a travel experience could be a two-star or a five-star. In this example, Drumheller, my wife and I have decided is a two-star experience. Same time, Disneyland, we've decided is a five-star experience. So what the algorithm is now doing in our scenario thread list, it is now weighting the calculations to put five star, above four star, above four, three star when ranking these. So you can see the number one choice here actually 
you're going to lose money, but it's based on the star ratings. Likewise, if I slide all the way back over to financial calculations, it's entirely about financial calculations. And I can slide that to be somewhere in the middle, which is a bit of a balance between those two. Let's take a little bit further. So right now, again, I have my six different scenario threads. I can, at any particular stage, look at each of these nodes. I can bypass a node if I want to take it out of my calculations. Just ignore that so it's not factoring into things, but I don't lose it. I can always resurrect that particular choice. I can also, at any particular stage, especially when I have a decision, I can lock into one of those decisions. So for example, the manager job, I'm going to choose to lock that decision in. I've now made a choice. So these two are no longer being factored in. And you can see we're now actually just down to two individual threads. And in the graph, there are just two individual threads. Back to the thread list, every time I click on a scenario thread, I can jump and visualize one or the other choice, both in the canvas, see it's flipping between Drumheller and Disney, and in the graph. And again, there's some work to be done on the graph to make that a little bit more intuitive. But now, as we get thinking about it, we start to realize that maybe there's some other decisions and some other things we need to think about when we're making this choice. So we're actually going to think about renting a car as well. So if I'm going to Drumheller, I've got two choices. I can rent a car. So I'm going to add a decision event here. We're going to call it car rental. We're going to add that decision junction. Now, I'm in the decision junction. I'm going to add an option. One is that I'm going to rent a car, so we're going to have an expense. We're going to call it car A, and we're just going to make up some dates and numbers here. So we're going to say that this thing is a couple months in the future. We're going to say that it is a one-time payment, and let's really drive it home and say it's expensive. We're renting a $5,000 car. It's just a, we're renting a Lamborghini, so it's going to be a five-star option for us as well. And I'm going to commit that choice, so I now have car A as an option here. I'm also now going to add a second option. So now we're going to call this one also an expense, car B. We're also going to set this at some fabled date in the future. This one is going to be, let's say it is a, a one-time expense as well, but this one is going to be $2,500. And it's a decent car. We're going to make that a three. And now continue. So you now see we have these two different choices and very quickly you can see we're back up to having multiple scenario threads again. Right. One thing I want to show you on the graph is that you can now see those new choices popping into the graph. All right. So as I pick scenario thread one, I can now see car A expense actually mapped in the graph. It's the $5,000 cost. I can see how much that's going to cost over time. It allows me to toggle back and forth. I'm going to choose to lock in this car rental. So I'm now down to a smaller subset. And uh, I'm going to lock in the drum heller. And I'm now down to my final choice. As you can appreciate, these are just building blocks. There's a lot more that you can do with them. And over time, we are building other custom nodes. So right now, for example, we already have, as we add an event, we already have the option to have income events, expense events, loan events, and mortgage events. Very soon, you can have a resale event. You can have a childcare node. You can have an, um, a daycare node, uh, hiring a nanny. You can have a career opportunity nodes, income tax calculator nodes. We'll be building these blocks out for you to model more and more complex scenarios over time. So what's next? We're going to be releasing 0.5 to a small group of alpha users. We're going to build some scenarios with them interactively and get a sense of what does and doesn't work, what feature requests people are going to have, and we're going to iterate those into future versions. So if you have any questions, I look forward to your feedback. So that's Whatify. We built Whatify to help everyday people make bigger decisions better. When my twin boys were born almost five years ago now, my wife and I started asking Whatify's. What if I, what if we sell our house here in Vancouver and move to Penticton or Portland or one of the suburbs of Vancouver? What if we rent out the basement? What if we put on Airbnb? What if my wife goes back to work part-time, full-time? What if she waits a year or two years or three years? What if we put the kids in daycare? What if we hire a nanny? 
These are the kind of decisions that we were trying to calculate. And we found that both the complexity of those choices, the calculations of those choices, and the time piece of those choices were all too challenging to reliably build in a spreadsheet. So what we've done is built an interface that allows you to visually map out those choices. We have built in all of the calculations under the hood there so that when you run scenarios through those, those nodes, we do the math to make sure that the math is correct. And we also factor in time. We let you play with different start dates and end dates to see how these different scenarios play out. Ultimately, our goal at Whatify is to help you make bigger decisions better. And we look forward to your feedback.